Kevin Riley here with Athena, who okay. caught this wonderful fish. We're at Lake Kawasa in Saranac, New York, July 23rd. And this wonderful northern pike, probably about five pounds. And we're gonna fillet it up and we're gonna eat it. Athena, how did you catch this fish? Um, so me and my dad, who is the photographer, we rented a canoe and um, we were just, you know, fishing and then out of nowhere, like, at first I thought it was a snag. It was just like a slow, a big, bad thing there. You know, I'm reeling and then my dad keeps saying, it's just a snag, it's just a snag. And so we've been arguing until suddenly it just like dashes like crazy to the side. Then he agreed with me, it was a fish. And we were fighting um, with this thing for like, what, five minutes at least? Was it a struggle to oh, bring it yeah. in? Yeah, it was a big struggle. Like, I was scared to snap the line because it was so heavy. I could tell it was a big fish. Where did you learn how to fish? My dad's a fisher. He just taught me. I was just like, whoa. Oh my God. <laughs> and what are we going to do? Are we going to eat this guy? Yep. All right. Um, it's interesting. It's freshwater fish, obviously. I'm used to dealing with saltwater fish in a restaurant. Um, but we're going to, it's, it's very, got a good bulk to it. Um, so we're going to fillet it. We're going to scale it first, gut it, fillet it, and then we're just going to saute it with a little bit of butter and olive oil. Very simple. A little bit of lemon. I'm curious because I've never had this kind of fish before. Slimy. Okay, let's yeah. go for it. Table, just be careful. <laughs> Okay. We're going to remove the head. We'll cut on both sides of the collarbone. Let's start over here so you can see. Come down on the top of the backbone. When you put your fingers in there, you find the backbone and just ride the knife right along the bone down to the rib cage. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of little pin bones, so you have to get through those. Hopefully. Then that belly flap you could take right off because it could be very tough. Okay, so you got a nice fillet, nice firm, very firm white flesh. I'm very curious to how this guy's going to taste. Alright, so next, we'll start on the tail area and do the same procedure, bring it down right above the backbone. Okay. And once again, I'm just going to ride that spine. Second fillet. Take the belly flap off. Very tough skin. We may actually take the skin off. I think that's what we're going to do. Some fish you could eat skin on, but this may be a little bit leathery. So lay that flat. And you just want to insert the knife in between the skin and the flesh. And once you get that started, you hold the skin and kind of move the skin back and forth while your knife kind of stays in place. That works. Sure does. All right, so that's your nice filet, and we're going to clean that up. And we're going to do the same thing with the other side. And that comes right off. You cut it into some pieces. Then we're going to find the pliers and take as many of those bones out as we can. Okay, what you want to do is run your finger down against those bones and you'll see they pop up. It should come out. No, these are kind of tough. 
That's fine. Now what you could do, I'm gonna go try on one of these, mm -hmm. is you could actually maybe cut them out. I don't wanna take away too much from the filet. Uh, we'll probably cook the other ones with the bone in and we could just eat around them. Because otherwise you lose you lose a lot that way. Now the tail piece usually doesn't have any of the rib cage in there, so that's a beautiful piece right there. So anyway, we're going to cook them up just like they are okay. and deal with it. So deal sorry. with it. Yeah. All right. We're gonna Your put this in the used. fridge for now. Yeah, I'll get the potatoes almost done and I'll saute the fish. A little salt and pepper. Okay, and the overall. And a little butter. Actually, I'm gonna make a little lemon brown butter on the side because I wanna taste exactly how the fish tastes without the sauce. So we'll put the sauce on the side here. The key when you're cooking this is to not screw with it, you let it sit. A lot of people, the first thing they do is they're shaking it around and agitating it and then it just tears up the filet. The edges are starting to turn nice and white, you see. And at that point, you can give it a little, little shake. Make sure nothing sticks. Oh yeah, just about there. And what you want to do is flip it away from you so you don't splatter yourself. You can also gently you can see it's still got a lot of spring in it, so it's, this one is just about done. So it springs back, and it's still a little raw in the center. And like I said, what you can do is... It's, it's still firm in there, it doesn't go right through, that means there's still a little raw meat in there. Yep, that's just about done. He's done. Yay. Like I said, you could cheat also. I mean, if you're, especially if you're eating at home, you peel that back and you can see it's white all the way through. Mm -hmm. So you know it's pretty much cooked. Almost. In a second. Meanwhile, what I'm going to do is use them up top. This whole cabin is slanted this way, so everything goes to the bottom. We're going to put some butter. And we're going to let that brown a little bit. The French call it beurre noisette. And a, a nutty tasting brown butter. A little classic sauce. Yay. See the butter starting to brown there? Mm -hmm. And you can smell it. And smell like kind of toasty. Uh-huh. Yep. Then that's how you know it's done. So normally at this point I would put a little bit of white wine, but we don't have any wine. So I'm just gonna put a little bit what? of water. Yep. And when you boil that, it emulsifies the sauce. It brings it together, makes it homogenous. What's that? That's a little bit of olive oil. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. And a little bit of lemon juice. At this point, I could turn that off. Making sure you don't get any seeds in there. You know, if we had some parsley or some fresh herb, and we would put some oh, hello, herbs on there also. And that's basically our fish. Time to eat. Dun, dun, dun. Well, you're gonna share that with us, aren't you? No. No. Dun, dun, dun. It is mine. Oh, mine. Wait, Sauce. what about Maria? Um, she's not gonna be back to later. We can save her a little piece. 
the... This is the brown butter sauce that we made. A little uh, brown butter, olive oil, touch of water, salt and pepper, and lemon juice. Very simple. All right, yeah. let's see what we got here. Hmm. Wow. Right? Very fine flake. Yeah. Firm. Yeah. yeah. I would say it's similar. You know, it's not as pronounced flavor as like a red snapper, but it's in that in that family. Right. Yeah. It's really good. Four stars? Five. Five and, and a half. <laughs> Five and okay. a half. Five and a half. Available for yes. us. Yes. Thank you, Fish. Thank you, Fishy. Thank you, Fish. For biting on my bait. For <laughs> my bait. And One more time. Give it a nice. <laughs> Well, first of all, I'd like to thank Athena for catching the wonderful northern pike that we had. First time that I've had it, first time I've cooked it, and I was very pleasantly surprised with uh, how moist it was. Uh, very fine flake, um, pretty firm. I would say if I had to compare it to maybe like a halibut, something like that. Um, and I thought it was a really wonderful fish. Uh, we cooked it up simply in some olive oil and butter with a little brown butter sauce and some veggies and uh, I think it came out well. As just like him I've never tried pike and I was scared it would be too dry or something and it would be too hard but it actually came out really well. Never be afraid of your food. <laughs> it did have a lot of bones. Well, except I, for the piece I made for you I took the bones yeah, out. Yeah <laughs> I didn't have any bones. I took those two pieces without bones, so I was good. No, it's, it's a little work. It would be hard in a fine dining restaurant, but at home it's definitely can be done. If you took the bones out, it, you would lose a lot of the flesh. So, you know, at home you cook it and you take the bones out as you're eating it. It's no big deal. Some people do like to just catch a fish and then show it off by stuffing it and putting it on the wall or something. It had a lot of good meat in it and you just wasted the whole fish. It could have been um, a great meal for someone else. Should fish for a purpose, if, right? Yeah. So my opinion is only keep the fish if you're going to eat it. Otherwise, just let it go. Nice job on that fish. I okay. caught the fish. He cooks it. We eat it. That's right. <laughs> Be in that order. Bye-bye. <laughs>